Well, we're very uh, lucky to have so many effective medicines for treating multiple sclerosis, but our decisions now are really made in part on how we can use these medicines as safely as possible. And so for each one of our medicines, there's a, a risk profile that we often discuss with our patients and try to choose medicines in, in an effective way. Now, when I'm thinking about changing a patient's disease-modifying therapy for MS, I, I've taken to making a sort of simple uh, set of infectious workup labs that I send. Um, and this is so that we can know what infections or immunities a given patient has before we start or change their disease-modifying therapy. And, and different ones apply to different medicines, but I'll, I'll give you an example. So for um, the B-cell depleting agents, we want to make sure that patients don't carry tuberculosis and don't carry hepatitis. These are both things that I explain to patients. They can carry for many years, even decades, and not realize it, but it's important important for us to know. For uh, natalizumab, as well as for some of our oral agents, we want to make sure we know their JC virus antibody status. So we check the JC antibodies, and this is positive or negative, and now there's also an index value that we can get to see how much immunity to the JC virus someone carries. Um, and then we also look for things like varicella zoster immunity. So we want to make sure that people are immune to chickenpox. That in particular relates to fingola mode, one of our oral medicines. And Finally, um, we also you know, want to see overall blood counts, liver function tests, chemistries to make sure that all the organ systems work well before we change the medicine. So it's this little panel that I like to send off and I explain to patients we're going to look for JC, VZV, tuberculosis, hepatitis um, as a way of sort of putting together their you know, infectious risk profile. And then that helps us to narrow down the playing field of medicines that would be the next best drug for that person. So we talk a lot about biomarkers in MS, and we don't have perfect ones, but I think we have good biomarkers for risk, looking for the risks of those things, you know, uh, uh, chicken pox, PML, um, activated tuberculosis or hepatitis. Uh, and that helps us to maximize the benefit-risk ratio of those medicines for an individual patient.